We also use it as a feeder system to our coaching assistant. Well, I kind of showed you that, uh, that breakdown we had where our coaches, um, we had the, the coaches and the coaching assistants and interns. So what we have is a feeder system. So if we're, if we're sitting there, one of our other assistants leaves for a, um, a head strength coaching position, we've had a coaching assistant, someone who's certified, maybe has her master's degree already, um, working with those athletes all of a sudden. If they're doing a good job, guess what? It's gonna be much, much easier for them just to move up to that position. The advantage is, you know, they put in their dues, they pay their dues, they've been doing a good job so they get bumped up, but it helps us because they've been working with those teams already. So now we're not losing a coach, bringing in someone new, they have to learn the coaching staff, learn the players. That coaching assistant has already been involved with those teams, maybe leading the teams, and with, and with their position groups in football. So they step right up, we lose nothing. We take the interns, if there's good interns with, under that coaching assistant, they bump up to the coaching assistant position. Okay, that might not always be the case, but in theory, that's, it's a feeder system. Again, we went through this already, they're assigned, um, interns are assigned to a full-time coach. Okay, we put a lot of time up front with our interns. Okay, we had, like I said, we have 16 interns, we might, might maybe started with 20. Is some of that, some of that time, I guess, is wasted because we may lose them. You get some interns in, it's inevitable, okay? If you start with 20, you're gonna lose four right away because they're gonna realize pretty quickly that they don't wanna be a strength coach. When they have to get up early, they have to put the work in and that. Okay, but you weed those out. But we put a lot of time in up front. So when they come in, we pretty much do two weeks of, of initial training, okay? We do introductions of our staff, of the weight room, all that type of stuff. We have a manual, I wish I would have brought one up, but, but um, again, through the years, Coach McCaffrey's put together a manual and um, it's amazing, we cover everything in this manual. It's the thickest manual we have, I think. Um, we go through a program overview with them. We talk to them again about our program. We spend two weeks doing this. We go over the workouts with them. We go through every workout we have, explaining what we're looking for. Um, and then again, we follow it up with, with, they have to experience the workouts. We actually put them through the workouts. Okay, so we put a lot of time up front. Um, it's not, they're not just coming in and they're not just gonna help us, you know, clean the weight room, pick up trash and just stand around and just help me carry my clipboard around, okay? We're training them because we're gonna give them athletes. They're gonna take four athletes so we can keep that ratio. So if I have, you know, 12, 12 girls in on the softball team and I have myself and two coaching assistants or two interns, you know, we're each gonna go with four athletes. So again, we're keeping that coach to athlete ratio. So we're gonna expect them to take our athletes. So I always tell our interns that if our athletes close their eyes, they shouldn't know the difference if I'm taking them through, or a coaching assistant's taking them through, or an intern's taking them through. We expect that same level from them, which is a good thing because it helps us, number one, with the administration of our program, but it helps them. The only way they're gonna learn and get better is by having some of that responsibility. 